Good evening uh, or good morning or uh, good day, depending where you are uh, listening uh, to, this, uh, to this talk. I'm, uh, my name is Stefano Curtarolo. I am a professor of material science at Duke University. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some fair tools for symmetry and structure recognition based on the AFLO uh, framework and set of codes. I want to thank uh, 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 my postdocs, uh, David Hicks, uh, Cormac Toher, Coriosis, and Professor Mike Mel for having contributed to, 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 to this work. And also the, the, the sponsor, uh, Department of Defense, uh, Office of Naval Research. Okay, so let's go, let's start. From descriptors, description to materials, okay? Description are based on features, what this material is, uh, for instance, prototype of fingerprints, how the material is, uh, is organized, what these are the symmetries, what if it's order, disorder, what are the atomic environments, and other features can be other descriptors, can be phenomenological, or can be calculated uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, um, algebraic methods and opti optimiz optimized algebraic methods. Once we have the feature, we get the properties and we get the new materials, exactly, new materials and, uh, and properties and applications. So how to get uh, this, uh, the, these features? In the case of uh, prototyping, okay, we are proposing uh, uh, our, new, our new code, which is called AFLO uh, Crystal Match, Crystal match from uh, for, for short, and uh, I, will, I will show you how it works, and it is going to be introduced in this presentation. And for symmetry, a flow sim, okay, and other tools for other for other descriptors, and all gluing all together, okay. We plan to do autonomous slash automatic uh, material discovery. All right. So the descriptors are the key of uh, for uh, for uh, for finding new materials. I'm going to start from a flow seam because actually a crystal match depends on the flow seam. So we, I, we, I will start from the symmetry first. Okay. The symmetry. The symmetry is an ever aging problem because it's actually is very, despite it's uh, conceptually simple, it's actually very complicated to calculate. Okay. So how it is uh, calculated actually is ubiquitous. In every part of material science, we need to know what is the symmetry. Okay. Uh, how symmetry is calculated? Suppose that you have an organization of atoms and you become, and then you try to understand how I can match this ball into this ball and this ball into this ball, okay? Maybe there is a, 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 a rotation. So you try, in this case, a fourfold rotation and you see if you man can match atoms on top of each other. That's an ideal scenario, okay? The ideal scenario is, the, is here where all this square is well defined. Here, this square is kind of, uh, of, of the form and here actually this square actually is missing two atoms. Okay, if you apply this fourfold rotation, you see that you're gonna here you're gonna have a perfect matching. So you do have a full rotation. Here you have a kind of is map or non map depends on some tolerance. And here you have no mapping at all because actually there are two missing atoms. So in this case, actually you would have a two fold rotations. But uh, what I'm trying to tell you here is that uh, is this mapped or not? This question mark depends on the tolerance between the position of the atoms and the center of uh, of the tolerance sphere. So, as again, the symmetry is all about tolerance and the David, the David is in the details. Okay, let's, uh, let's understand what tolerance is. When you define tolerance, okay, you define tolerance as, oh, two atoms are in the same position if they are as close as whatever, all right, a distance. So for you, tolerance is really a spherical concept in the real space. And you can define this tolerance despite what is the, 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 the lattice, okay? If you, are in Carti if you are in Cartesian, it would be cubic, orthoromic, and triclinic, okay? However, if you were calculating symmetry in the fractional space where you, you, de you, you, op you decompose the position of the atoms in A1, A2, A3 of the unit cell, okay? Then everything becomes cubic, but uh, this uh, sphere actually gets, uh, remains a sphere if only if you are in a cubic lattice. Otherwise, it's going to become a, 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 a ellipsoid, which can be ro rotated, depending on if you have angles. What I'm trying to tell you is that the way you, de you define this uh, the, the torrents is actually is going to affect the calculation, not only the magnitude of the torrents, but it also the way. Look, for instance, at this example. Okay, suppose that you are, uh, suppose that there is a mirror here, you see this, this gray atom as this one, this gray atom is this one, and so on. If there is a meter here and you sit in these things, you start looking at atoms nearby and you find that, and you find this one, and you say, wow, 
there is a there is a mirror because for every one of this there is this on the other side okay and you find it okay so there is a real mirror but if you were doing uh, the, your uh, your uh, your symmetry determination in cartesian then uh, the closest atom would be this and you see there is no mirror to go between those two okay so practically the fact that uh, you you choose uh, the lattice and uh, you go into fractional coordinate gives you a different set of potential uh, symmetry operation to test. So in fractional coordinates, actually, despite our, uh, it's, uh, they are much, the calculations are much faster because you have only fraction going from zero to one, it uh, can lead to mistakes because your tolerance is not well uh, defined. This is the first uh, uh, point. The second point is that uh, 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 when you define and you calculate tolerances only in the real space and you believe that the tolerance is a sphere in real space, remember that the dual of a sphere is a sphere. So tolerances in the reciprocal space will still have the shape of a spheres. So if this uh, sphere has a, a, a diameter of D, in the reciprocal space is going to have a diameter of 2 pi over t. So if you want to calculate a symmetry that is a congruent and compatible between real space, position of the atoms, and the reciprocal space, shape of the brillant zone, irreducible part of the brillant zone, asymmetry point, you need to have a, a, a tolerance which is spherical, okay? Is not the fastest uh, a, a, a way to, do, to calculate it, but it's the only way that uh, you, you, you're going to get results that are uh, compatible with each other in terms of Brillouin zone, uh, Pearson symbol, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, integrating path and everything. That's why we get results. That's why we have a path that are compatible. But the question is, which tolerance you take? Well, depends, all right? In normal codes, you, there are tolerances that are set by, by, by the, the programmer, by the, 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 by the authors, and then you pretty much need to live with them, or the user can, um, can uh, try to change them to see if you have a more or less uh, operation and you can recognize uh, which symmetry you have. This is not the way A-flow works. Since the symmetry is calculated in the real space and at the same time in the reciprocal space, okay, you can do, uh, uh, you can do the following trick. Okay, you define a, a, a set of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of tolerances going from a very tight one, from a very loose one, okay, and actually scan them all. You calculate the symmetry and the number of, uh, opera of symmetry operation in the real space and in reciprocal space as a function of the tolerance sphere, okay? And you will find the uh, regions of the tolerance in which uh, the number of operations is actually compatible. Remember that the dual of an FCC is a BCC, so you 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 have you you so so you can you know which are the the number of operations you have in real and which are the number of operations you have in the reciprocal, and you can understand that when this operation, the number and the type of operations are co are, are 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 compatible. So pretty much, you, the the code automatically scan from uh, from the minimum to the maximum and find the region where the tolerance gives you a solution which is uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, consistent, okay, in all the possible descriptions of the unit set. In uh, and uh, the tolerance, I would say here, percolates <coughs> to all the aspects of the description. So the user does not decide any tolerance anymore. It's all adaptive and, uh, and self-consistent. How do we compare with other codes? We compare with FineSim, Platon, and SPGLib. They all work uh, calculating symmetry in the, in the fraction, uh, in fractional uh, coordinates. We, we do it in the Cartesian and uh, 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 real space, uh, and Cartesian real and reciprocal space at the same time, okay? So we do not have any, any, any tolerance. It's found automatically. The other codes have a, 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 a standard tolerance and actually the one that, uh, that, that, that the user can choose, okay? So you see that A-flow always, uh, A-flow sim always beats all the other, the other codes. It finds the best possible scenario. And the other codes can reach the, our accuracy, okay, only if uh, the, the, the user start uh, tinkering uh, with the tolerances. Uh, for instance, fine sim, you need uh, you need, uh, or I don't remember, or probably Platon finds but you need uh, distances and angles and so on, right? So only if the user starts tinkering with tolerances and uh, then 
they, 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 they can reach the accuracy of A flow and the, and, uh, the um, congruency of A flow uh, real and reciprocal uh, by, by hand, practically, while A flow, A flow sim does it automatically. Just a scan, you wait, uh, you wait uh, one minute instead of uh, 20 seconds, and then you get everything, uh, and you get everything uh, uh, correct, okay? More correct. Okay. Another things that you can do is uh, identify crystal spin symmetry, right? Uh, you you take all you know that there is a difference between the crystal symmetry where atoms are, don't have any color, okay? And then you put colors like spin up or spin down, and then you find that uh, the, the the various space group here in this case is going to tell you that uh, crystal symmetry is two to nine. This one is two to one, and it's going to tell you also which operations are are conserved. So you know that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, the crystal spin symmetry is a subset subgroup. Of the crystal symmetry, so it gives all these informations. Other information is a uh, uh, factor group, which is very important. This is the subset of uh, of uh, operation on the space group that actually map uh, atoms uh, into the unicell and 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 not outside. Okay, right. So you do not go out of the unicell. So actually, it's not really a group, but it's called factor group anyway. Okay, and then uh, uh, side group, uh, point group. If you want to understand the forces and uh, and uh, for phonons and uh, and for heat transport, but this is actually very important. Example. Uh, uh, let me show you this animation. If you go online, uh, if you go online uh, for all this uh, for for uh, all the entries that are uh, that are online. Okay, you can choose the operation that you want to apply. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and then the code is going to show the operations, it's going to show the axis, the mirror, and so on. But in the future, here, there will be also an option to put uh, your own uh, uh, structures in uh, Postcard or in, uh, in VASPA or uh, Quantum Express or FHI Ames or uh, Abinit uh, format, you name it. Okay? And then uh, you, it is going to calculate the operations, and then you're going to click a button and you want to visualize with JMOL and then, and, then, and, then, and then see, and then move them and see how they are, right? Okay, it's very important to have the factor group and uh, and uh, the site uh, operation and this and uh, and the work of positions, because uh, you can drastically accelerate the calculation of the phonons. This is, for instance, this is an harmonic uh, A flow phonon library, and we calculate an example. We calculate uh, some heat tra in heat uh, transport, and you see that uh, by having the, the 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 by by having the factor group and the having the uh, the symmetries, the side symmetries, we can we can reduce even further the calculations with respect to other other uh, heat transfer uh, uh, codes like like Phonopi or Sheng BT. Right, we have one third for uh, for this class of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, crystals and uh, and here uh, not that uh, much gain, but you know, so there just always be a little bit of gain. All right, okay. This thank you thanks to the calculation of the factor group and the site operations, symmetries, okay? Last but not least, uh, there is a Python module, all right? So you just uh, 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 compile a flow, then uh, you, 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 you download uh, the, the, the interface, uh, and then you instruct this interface, uh, you give, uh, you give uh, 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 instructions, uh, and you get uh, input and output in the same usual uh, syntax that you would do with, uh, for other codes such as SPGLib. So the adoption of, this, uh, of the Python interface could be actually uh, very quick, okay? Now let's go to the second part of the talk, okay? So the prototypes and the matching. This is important because you want to know what you have in your hand and what you're handling. Are you handling BCC? Are you handling rock salt? Are you handling FCC, okay? So the first things we do, okay, we actually calculate a symmetry, okay? First of all, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me digress. Why duplicates are important, okay? Because you know they actually po they are uh, they are polluting data mining or machine learning because uh, you do not know how many there are the same, and therefore you might over the double count triple count uh, your uh, your entries, or they might help you identify uh, prototypes or uh, or uh, and and start decorating them, and then uh, and then uh, the lack of uh, no uh, no of uh, of knowledge uh, of your prototype such as. Uh, the origin might also obfuscate uh, w w what you really have in hand because you do not know where is the origin, where is the orientation, and actually this becomes a becomes a problem. Okay, so having the prototypes, knowing the prototype is a big a big deal in uh, in computational material science. So our code, the crystal match, first, uh, you know, you take uh, two two input files, right? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, geometry one, geometry two, and it calculates the symmetry 
uh, the space group operation for both of them and try to match them and try to and find out uh, which one are compatible to which one and then you understand immediately if uh, if uh, if you are in the same class uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, crystal structure and if a comparison makes sense or not okay uh, once you have done this, and this is very important because it drastically reduces uh, the number of, uh, of, uh, of comparison you will do on the second stage, you do, you use the, 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 an idea adapted uh, from the original Burlas and Malik Balinovsky, uh, Acta Christian in the 97, okay? Which is uh, to try to make, uh, you see, you have a, 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 a organization one, organization two, you make supercell of them, then you reduce, and then you try to see if you can match one on top of another, okay? So how you match? You match in terms of, uh, of a misfit, uh, the number of atoms that are matched, okay? The number of corner displays that are matched or unmatched, and the number of lattice de de deviation. So practically, you try to take this quadruplets origin plus three atoms and try to match them on top of each other until you find uh, if there is a match or measure it, okay? You define a misfit, and then if this misfit uh, is uh, small, then they are the same things. If it's uh, how big, they are completely different. And if it's uh, something in between, then you have the same family, which means same family, but distorted. Okay. Remember that this part okay, is actually computationally very demanding, because if your prototype is small, then this is actually quite, quite quick. But if your prototype is big, like 50, 100 atoms per cell, this actually can become a huge, a huge uh, 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 problem. And, uh, and therefore, that's why you want to do lat uh, symmetry reduction before, and this is our code is the only way. It's the only one that does it. So you understand that you're already in the same crystal uh, family or not, okay? Com type of comparison, material type, uh, you know, you have blue and yellow atoms, and it tells you if these two materials are the same. Rock salt and another definition of rock salt, be calculated by another code, bam, they are the same. Structure type, uh, oh, this was uh, a B1 uh, sodium chloride, this is B1 uh, zinc oxide. And then bam, they are the same, right? It, it tells you that uh, they are they are the same uh, the same uh, the same uh, prototypes. Or decoration, you take an ideal uh, an ideal uh, uh, X Y Z, and then you start uh, changing uh, the black and the gray at at uh, at, uh, at the wish. You you make all the possible decoration, and you start grouping the one that are the same. That's actually very useful. Magnetic type again, uh, you you have uh, two prototypes. One is rotated and uh, a different spin or different orientation of the spin and the lattice. And it's going to tell you if they are the same or if they're or only the spin is different or or, 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 or the crystal is different. Okay? Those are the all uh, very good uh, and uh, if, uh, effective comparison types. But one of the most important things of this code is that this gives you the ideal prototype. What is the ideal prototype? You know, when you look for the table of prototypes, uh, Prototypes are always say, oh, you have rock salt, uh, you have zinc blend, uh, you have uh, conundrum, and so on, right? But uh, there are prop the, or, or or you have a name here or uh, the structure beric. So these prototypes uh, go inside uh, uh, books or enc encyclopedia. This is a, a, an example of the Aflo encyclopedia of uh, prototypes, and they are tabulated. Okay, they are tabulated. They say these prototypes, these names. Uh, these names, uh, this is our, our designation, with these uh, with these properties. This is an example of uh, our uh, uh, prototypes. The prototypes uh, contains uh, a unit cell. Here there are two two parameters, A and C. So, so this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, A and C. There are two parameters. Okay, and then uh, and then uh, there is uh, uh, there are internal degrees of freedom. You see there are X, uh, Y, and Z. Blah blah blah. There are many of those. A lot of them, all right? Okay, so you have external degrees of freedom, which uh, percolate uh, with internal degrees of freedom into the shape uh, of and the position of the atoms, okay? But uh, who gives you this internal degrees of freedom? Actually, if you only have the 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 the, the structure without symmetry, you would have to generate all the possible uh, 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 unit cell with all the possible internal degrees of freedom and try to match one on top of another. This would be this would take forever, okay? But our code actually skips this part because our code by calculating the symmetry first, we calculate all the the, the, the symmetry operation. We calculate this what is called the Wyckoff positions. From the Wyckoff position, the code will know what are the symbolic operations. You see these operations, and we'll check over all the possible symbolic operation that have been tabulated, or also the one that are not tabulated, but they are known from the space group, will tell you which prototype it is. 
Okay, bottom line, it's very powerful. You start from a geometry, where's the mouse? Okay, you start from geometry like this, is a postcard, okay? You pass to the code, and the code is gonna tell you, is this prototypes with this, uh, this, uh, this ideal one, all right, like uh, previous, like the, the, the page, web page, with these uh, parameters, intern, external and internal, and with these values. Actually, very powerful. You can do also the opposite. If, if you come to me with, uh, with uh, the, the name and uh, the, the, the values, the, the code actually can generate the, 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 um, the XYZ, can generate the, the, the geometric positions, okay? So here, you're truly going to have a, de a, de a definition of prototypes. You feed the, your, 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 uh, your, the, the, out, the output of your calculations and you will know, bam. I got rock salt. No, I got B2. I got B, B3, whatever. Okay? So this is another feature it has. You want to make a, you want to make a, a, a grouping. You come to us and you say, hey, I have a one, one million uh, uh, input files that I want to group. Which ones are the same? So this can be run uh, in a parallel. The, the, the code is completely parallelized, so it spreads in, in, uh, in various cores of, uh, of, your, of your computer all the possible calculations, and it's going to group. It's going to say, oh, I have a group one, group two, with a, and those are in, in the group one, and those are in the group three. So it's going to tell you how many you have and who, which, which one they, they are. And you can play with these things and say, oh, which are, are only decorated with respect to the others. <coughs> Excuse me. And which are, which are, uh, which are uh, the spin uh, and which are uh, the, the, the identical prototypes. You can do all these things, okay? You can do these things also. You can even map... Uh, uh, I, I told you that is parallel, so true threads. And you can also map them into a database. This, for, for instance, once, once you identify one prototype, right, or one calculation, you say, of this calculation, is this calculation already done? Has already been done? Okay. First of all, you do not know, you do not know the, the positions. Well, you know the position, but you do not know. You cannot go through millions and millions of calculations to find if these things has been performed. So there is a, a, a small Python module that connects to, 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 to our uh, repository through uh, uh, a program, sorry, a, a language called Aflux. Actually, it's very simple. This is like three, four, uh, four lines of codes, right? And you can read this, uh, this paper, Rose et al. in this comp match sheet. Okay, and this will connect to our repository, will inquire, and it will, and, uh, it will search through all the database the, the, the one that are compatible. So you make, you crank all this machinery and you get, uh, bam, that's what it was. It was sodium chloride. So then you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna also receive, if there are, you're gonna receive uh, these uh, identifiers, which are truly links. You click one of these links and you get all the, all the, all the, all the various uh, information, uh, information energy and so on. So practically, you might even skip in the future some uh, VASP calculations by performing on these things and say, oh, is this calculation already done? Bam. This works for a few minutes and it tells you, yes, it is done and it has these values. Okay? So actually very powerful. This is differences between uh, our functionalities and functionality of, uh, of, other, of, other, uh, of other codes. You can see these tables, but everything is, uh, is summarized in this article that is uh, submitted, but if you want, I can give you, I can send you just send me a note and they send you a, a copy, okay? Anyway, let me summarize. The future, in our opinion, is, future, is full of data and descriptors. And for accelerated material development, we need tools with little or, new, or no user intervention. They, you, once the code works, they need to be, be able to go by themselves because the amount of data that is going to be generated and it's going to be analyzed is too big. For, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for people to, to check and fix and so on. So everything needs to be done as automatic as possible. And the Aflow is a set of framework that uh, is a framework, is a set of, uh, of, uh, of libraries and, uh, and codes that uh, is preparing for this challenge. And little by little, uh, we are doing our part uh, in accelerated material development. Okay, uh, I want to thank my collaborators. There are too, too, too many to list. Uh, to, to many to, to, to name, so some from Duke and some not from Duke, and also some from, from the audience. And I also uh, want to thank again the sponsor and uh, uh, the audience. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, if you like this type of uh, work, accelerated material development, and in particular using these things 
to study disorder system, just uh, send me uh, your CV, uh, both for student and postdoc. We are always uh, open uh, to discuss. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm here uh, ready for questions. Thank you.